Well, my dear friends, what can I say about this story other than what the f... <laughs> You're not going to believe this one, let me tell you. Quite an unbelievable tale to help you through the middle of the week. Well, let's get straight down to it, shall we? Sit back with your favourite drink, my dear friends, because now it's time to listen. My wife and I travelled overseas to a relative's cabin, out here in the middle of Alaska, of all places. <laughs> Reconciliation, she called it. A cheating whore, I would often reply. Yes, we'd come out here as some sort of therapy, so that I wouldn't call for a divorce, and let her entire family know that the last round of shots at every bar in town was most likely going to be on her, literally. So, let's get started with the clichés. Piss poor connection. So that I have to manage social interactions with her. Check. Absolutely no way of contacting anyone for help. Thus making it easier for me to cause some sort of fatal incident if I do get even more sick of her. <laughs> Check. Snow so deep that even a snowplow would struggle to clear the path to us. Check. Yes, I was prepared for an absolutely amazing time in the cabin we had. The interior seemed much more welcoming, though. Oak wood beams hanging from the ceiling. Arched doorways between the rooms. Great bay windows overlooking the vast canvas outside. Had it not been so damn cold, I might have considered staying here for a while longer. The first thing I can recall my wife doing was heading upstairs to find our bedroom. I promptly followed when my inspection was halted by her terrified cries. I paced up the stairs quickly, suddenly finding myself in a corridor surrounded by closed doors on all sides. Honey? I called out, questioning the worry I felt. In here, hurry! I heard her call before seeing a beckoning hand reach out from one of the doors that had actually been slightly ajar. I jogged down the hallway to where my wife stood in the embrace of darkness, peering just beyond the veil of sight. I tried to squeeze past her when she halted me from opening the door any further. What is it? I impatiently asked. What the hell is that? She muttered the words, but I could feel the scream she was holding back. I tried to peer into the darkness, but my eyes adjusted slowly. Then, a form. It was hard to discern from the other silhouettes in the room, but the harder I stared, the more I could pick out the details of it. I could make out protrusions here and there, and a solid form the size of a curled-up adult person. I wasn't sure why my wife had screamed until the form began to writhe. In the darkness it swirled, shifting the absence of light around it to form darker shadows that mocked the frailty of what I could perceive. At some point, I must have jumped backwards, because before I knew it, my wife and I had fallen out of the room onto our backs, still staring in at the darkness. But now... There wasn't any darkness. In the fleeting panic, the door had been thrown open, and the light from the hallway spilled into the room, revealing the thing at the other side that was no longer sheltered by blackness. Shifting, ashen flesh, pulsated with purple veins. The form writhed uncontrollably now and I could see something squirming within the grey skin. The protrusions appeared to be animal legs, like those of a deer. They were straightened out, stiffly shaking as the light set upon more of this thing. I gagged as the sack of grey began to violently shake, trembling so hard that it was beginning to hit one of the limbs against the wooden floor. 
emitting a thudding noise that split the air. I turned to see my wife gagging, and when I turned back to look upon the thing, I saw the veins grow large and throb so greatly that I should have expected the outcome. It exploded. No guts, no gore. Just a heavy cloud of thick dust erupting from it. I coughed as the dust cloud spread to us, dissipating as it met with the hallway light. I quickly rubbed my eyes free of whatever had gotten on my face, and looked to see the flesh thing deflated against the back wall. The legs wilted, and though I'd sworn to myself something had been inside, it had deflated entirely into a near puddle of something soot-like. What just happened? My wife screamed from beside me, coughing as she lifted herself from the ground. I gazed up at her in confusion, watching her wipe away some of the grey that had settled on her face. How the hell am I supposed to know? I replied, slapping my hands down and standing myself up beside her. She began to sputter, holding her hand over her mouth, only yielded more of the dust substance let out by the thing in the dark room. Go get yourself into bed. I'll fix us up something to drink, I said with a growing resentment. Here I was, supposed to be having some sort of therapy session, and I was already catering to her like usual. But as much anger as I felt, I had a strange fear in me that whatever the hell was in that room was not right. Beside the boiling kettle, I held my phone up high for some semblance of signal. As that desired bar appeared on my phone, I reached up with my other hand to type in a description of what I'd seen. Nothing. No results relating to what I'd seen. But plenty of those horrid cyst-popping videos that somehow get around. As the kettle stopped boiling, I leaned over it to pour the water into the mugs on the side. But as I did, I felt something rise up in my throat and coughed violently. Sticky patches of grey splattered across the counter, some landing in the boiling water I'd accidentally spilled and shriveling up into tiny black clumps. Jeez, what the fuck? I whispered to myself before being interrupted by the louder coughing of my wife. It sounded as though she was trying to throw up her lungs, and when she finally stopped, I could just barely hear the frail whimpers of agony she was managing. I looked once again to the boiling water on the side that had burned away the grey stuff, and poured water into the mugs without mixing the tea, before running with them upstairs. Here, drink this, I shouted at her rushing to her side and sitting her up. She glanced cautiously at the steam rising from the mug, but she had quickly become pale, and I saw no room for hesitation before I forced the water to her lips. She screamed, but she managed to gulp it down, coughing up some blood as the empty cup fell beside her. I held her as the tears rolled and a charcoal sludge leaked from her lips. She tried to reach out for me, but I had already begun rushing back downstairs to get some cold water. That's when I saw black stuff on the kitchen side, growing out along where I'd spilled the water. It was throbbing like the grey thing, only it was much faster, and let out a putrid stench as I neared it. Shit. 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 I groaned, paralyzed. Then I heard the retching. I looked back to the stairs and tried to force myself to move, but I couldn't. I coughed harder, and it wasn't until I'd stopped that I realized my wife had gone silent. My legs were finally able to move, and I sprinted back up the stairs and down the long corridor to the bedroom, where my wife lay motionless, 
splayed across the bed with her eyes blank, and her mouth agape, dripping with sludge. No, not dripping. The sludge was moving in such a way that it was travelling up, as though crawling back inside her. I ran as fast as I could out of the cabin. Throwing my knees against the heavy onset of snow was like trying to escape waves in an ocean. As I neared the car we had driven up in, my feet became numb and I fell into the snow. I remember the cold seeping into my skin, nipping at me as I felt a sharp tug against my angle before being dragged back into the house. I barely managed to turn around to see the ghostly face of my wife, her mouth oozing with the black stuff as she pulled me back up the stairs. I tried to scream, but I coughed, and when I tried to claw myself away, I felt once tender fingers rip into me. Did she bite me too? I struggled against the pain too much to know, but when I finally felt free, I tried to climb back to my feet, but they wouldn't move. I peered down to see my wife, molding us together into some sort of cocoon. I was granted the freedom of my arms, and up here there's reception, so I can tell anyone out there, <laughs> do not come to this cabin. I'm not sure how long I'll have left after this post. I can feel my legs liquefying in the cocoon. I can feel the thing growing inside of me, though not as quickly as it did her. And I can see my skin turning a bitter grey as the days grow endless and the hallway light starts to flicker. <laughs> I did warn you that was quite an unbelievable one, didn't I? You didn't believe me, did you? Well, serves you right. You should know better by now, coming to my channel every week like you do. So, a short one for the middle of the week. I'll be back with something longer for you all on Friday evening, so please make sure to join me again. But for now, bye-bye.